Welcome to the Gospel Truth. I'm Brother Alan Jackson, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word of God. First of all, giving thanks to God Almighty for blessing me with this another outpouring of his tender love and mercy, and that he's allowed us once again to be on this the time side of life and have this blessed privilege to come to you in his name by way of this television medium and to bring to you another message from his holy and divine word. And as I always do, I'd like to continue to express my appreciation and my gratitude to the production staff for their diligent service. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless them with those things that he knows that they are standing in need of. And I'm praying on your behalf as participant observers. It's my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family members with those things that he knows that you are standing in need of as well. And of course, this evening, we'd like to remind you that we do have a prayer list, although we're going to forego the prayer list tonight, but you certainly can write to us and send to us the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones. And I will add their names to the prayer list. I will pray for them, encourage you to pray for them, and everyone in the viewing audience to pray for them as well. And then, of course, I want you to know that we do have uh, a, a phone, and so if you want to call and leave uh, the names of your friends, your relatives, and your loved ones, you can do that. Or if there's a Bible question, then you certainly are at liberty to raise your Bible question, and we will address that question on the air. And that number is 510-848-8843. Once again, that's 510-848-8843. And of course, I'm encouraging you to pray on my behalf because I'm also standing in need of prayer, and it's only God who can provide me with those things that I am standing in need of. And then I still want to make you aware of the fact that we know the economy is in a state of flux and people are being laid off, people are going back to work, but whatever the situation may be for you, if you are seeking employment or even a better job, I want to refer you to eastbayworks.org. So if you go to eastbayworks.org, there you will find the one-stop career center that is nearest to you. When you go there, then you will find yourself in a world of jobs. They have job leads and telephones and computers, fax machines, and all those things that will enhance your ability to become gainfully employed. And they also can provide you with uh, a mock interview so that you will not be so stressed out when you go before a prospective employer. They can help you to create a resume or they can critique your resume. So remember, that's eastbayworks.org and there you will find yourself in a world of jobs. And also, we know that people come to you from time to time and I know it happens regularly. If you can help them, then of course you do what you can. But if you can't, and even if you can, refer them to 211. 211 is a referral service and they can call that number indicate to the representative what their particular problem or need is, they will then be directed to the source that will help them to eliminate that particular need. So it could be for child care, an after school program, food service program, utility assistance, or rental assistance, or services for battered women, and much, much more. So remember, that's 211. All right, so now before we get into the message this evening, uh, we do have a song standing by. We have the uh, Crusade a cappella chorus, and they're going to be singing for us tonight, Trouble Doesn't Last Always. So without any further remark, oh, the Crusade a cappella chorus and always. Trouble Doesn't Trouble Last, last always. always. I'm so glad, so glad. I tell you that I'm so glad. My trouble don't last always. I know it don't last always. I'm so glad, so glad. I tell you that I'm so glad. My trouble don't last always. I'm so glad, so glad, glad. I'm so glad. 
We certainly would like to express our appreciation and gratitude to the a cappella chorus for that fine version of, I'm glad trouble doesn't last always. I'm glad that trouble doesn't last always. And so this evening, I want to uh, bring a message that perhaps will share some light on perhaps the troubles that you may be experiencing in this life. And you know, one thing for sure about this life is that we all are going to have some different experiences. And, and some of these experiences are certainly going to be troubling. And if you just keep in mind, if you remember Job, uh, Job was, of course, a man that found favor with God. He was perfect, all right? He assured evil, and he did those things that pleased God, and God considered him to be perfect. And as a result of uh, his perfection, he went on to talk about things that happen in life. And one of the things that he talked about was trouble. In fact, he says, man that is born of a woman is of a few days, and he is full of trouble. So this evening, what I want to bring to your attention is the trouble that we're experiencing. So I want to know tonight, what is troubling you? Mm -hmm. What's troubling you? Now somebody might say, well, there's nothing troubling me. Well, that's okay, good. Because one thing about trouble, you're either just getting out of trouble, or you're in the middle of trouble, or you're just coming out of trouble. Somewhere along the line, trouble is gonna come into your life. And, and somebody said, trouble, you don't have to worry about trouble, trouble will find you. Trouble will trouble you. So I'm asking tonight, what are you troubling about? Are you troubling over your lost condition? Do you see yourself as an individual, perhaps, who's headed towards hell, and you don't know what to do about that? Well, if you are troubled over your lost condition, then I want to refer you only to the gospel of Jesus Christ, because all you have to do is obey it. And if you go over to the book of Mark, the 16th chapter, verse number 15, there you can hear uh, Jesus speaking as he makes it known. Because see, sometimes people uh, want to tell you, well, you know, the only thing you have to do is just believe. And I want you to understand from the words of Jesus himself that it takes a little more than just saying, I believe. If you believe, belief is followed by some obedience. And this is what Jesus says. These are his words. And if you have one of those Bibles that has red writing in it, then you know that's supposed to be the writings or the speakings of Jesus, okay? So now this is what the Bible says in Mark 16, uh-huh, and the verse is number 16. He says, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned, all right? And then if you go to verse number 15, which is the one above it, he said unto them, go ye into all the world, talking to his apostles, and preach the gospel to every creature. So everybody's entitled to receive this message so that they won't have any trouble with regards to their soul, all right? So trouble doesn't last always unless you just make it go on and on. So now, Christian friends, are you troubled over that which the Lord expects of you? Well, you just need to keep this in mind, that the Lord, he is not going to put any more on you than you can bear. And all the things that the Lord would require of you, they are simply things that you can do. All right? Keep that in mind. Now, there's no, not just one thing, but you need to recognize that there are many things that the Lord requires of you in order to prove yourself as a good Christian and being able to look out for those who are in need. If you go over to Matthew, the 25th chapter, then you know that Jesus one day is going to say, you know, I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Uh-huh. And then shall the righteous answer saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee or thirsty and gave you the drink? You go over there and read that and understand that the Lord is saying, you can feed somebody that's hungry. You can close. You can go and visit somebody who's in prison. All right? So just keep that in mind that there are things that you can do so you should not be troubled over what the Lord expects for you. 
And again, like I said, if you are, then you need to stop your worrying and realize that God does not put more on an individual than they can do. His service is reasonable, all right? The Bible says over in the book of Romans, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, all right? God's not unreasonable, all right? Are you troubled over the various or the many temptations uh -huh, that you experience in this life? Well, let me tell you something. The Lord, again, because of his goodness, his kindness, he will never put any more on you than you can bear. And you can rest assured that with every temptation that comes about, that there is a means by which you can escape that, all right? So just keep that in mind, that that's what the Lord does. With every temptation, he does provide you with a means by which you can escape. Do you remember Joseph? Remember Joseph? Joseph, he was in Potiphar's house. And, you know, Potiphar's wife, she was looking at this young man. No doubt he was young and, and handsome, okay? And then her husband was away. And while he was away, you know, they say when the, when, when the cat's away, the mouse, the mice will play. Well, anyway, in this particular case, Potiphar's wife was trying to get at Joseph. And she got just so close to him, the Bible says he ran out of his coat and left his coat, all right? So I'm trying to get you to understand that with every temptation that you experience, God will provide a means for you to escape. Now, if you just want to go ahead and indulge, now that's a different matter. But if you are serious about the temptations troubling you, just keep in mind that God provides a way for you to escape. So friend, let me ask you tonight, are you troubled over your family? Well, if you are, I'm gonna tell you, somebody said you need to try a little tenderness. You see, love will go a long way. A little love, you know, you just have to give a little love and that will help you out. And, and furthermore, what you are worrying about your children, remember you have responsibility and that responsibility is to raise your children up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. If you go over to the book of uh, Ephesians, the first, fifth chapter, and the verses number one through four, four, you can hear the apostle, he says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, uh -huh, that thou mayest be well with thy soul. Let's do that again. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And you fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. All right? So when you do that, then there'll be no questions, no problems uh, about uh, uh, your family. So just understand, you have responsibility and everything will be all right. Now let me address you erring Christians. Now those of you erring Christians are those that have, number one, heard the gospel, believed it, repented of your sins, confessed Jesus, and you were born again in the liquid grave of baptism. But somewhere along the line, you let Satan come back into your life and take you away from the Lord. So you're out there mm -hmm, in sin, and you know that there are things in your life that are wrong. Well, let me just try to get you to understand that you certainly can come on back to the Lord, and he will allow you uh -huh. He will forgive you of your sins. If you will, let's go over to the book of James, the fifth chapter in the verse number 16. James 5 in the verse number 16, and you can hear uh, what he has to say with regards to this matter. James 5 and the verse 16. Listen to him now as he says these words. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So come on back to the house of God. Let us pray for you, and you can pray as well, and then you will be forgiven. So you won't have any anxiety about your current condition if that's what your concern is. So I trust that you will recognize that you don't have to be troubled as a result of your condition. You can come on back. You don't have to be baptized all over again. All you have to do is come on back Make it known that you fell by the wayside, but you know God, he's there. 
You just remember over there in Luke, remember that prodigal son, that young man who went to his daddy and said, look, I want my stuff now. And he had a good loving father. His father gave him uh, what he had. The young man, after a while, took a journey into a far country. When he got out there, he realized he didn't know what was up. He didn't even know how to budget. Next thing you know, he was broke and he was in need for what happened. He came to himself. So you might be out there now in the world lost, but remember the prodigal son. The Bible says when he came to himself. See, sin will take you further than you want to go and keep you longer than you intended to stay. So, but I'm trying to get you to understand, but he came to himself that I'm going home. I'm going to my father because in my father's house he has servants and they have bread enough to spare and I'm out here starving. That's what it was basically. In fact, he was working in the pig pen and would have eaten the same thing that the pigs ate. But anyway, God saw him. The father saw him afar off. And when he saw him coming, he said, prepare, go get a robe so we can put, a, put some shoes on it, put a ring on his face. God now is standing there watching you, knowing your condition. He's urging you to come. And as soon as you come, he's going to open his arm and say, welcome home. All right. So just remember, you don't have to stay in that lost condition. Now, if you are troubled this evening over the souls of others, then you have one responsibility to carry the gospel to them. We can all preach God's word. Now, somebody says, well, what about sisters? Well, sisters can talk to other sisters about uh, with salvation. Nothing wrong with that. If you will, let's go over to the book of uh, Timothy. In the book of Timothy, the second chapter, I believe that's where I want to go to. Uh, let's see, second Timothy, uh, the second chapter, that verse I want, I want to go there to see exactly uh, fourth chapter, verse number two. It says, preach the word. Uh -huh. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. All right? In other words, you have a responsibility to give them to them. The word, the Bible says, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. People today don't want the truth but they want you to tell them something that's going to tickle their ears. They want you to make them feel good. But I came by tonight to let you know that if you fail to do God's will, you're going to bust hell wide open. So I trust that you don't want to do that and that you will do those things that are right according to God's holy and divine word. And then you can find yourself in the fact that Jesus said, you are the light of the world. He said, you're supposed to let your light shine so that folk will see your good works and want to glorify the Father which is in heaven. That's over in Matthew, the uh, fifth chapter, and the verse of number 16. And then, of course, Jesus gives the great commission in Matthew 28. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations, uh -huh. baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Now keep that in mind. You understand, Jesus says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Now here we are at the end of November, coming up December, coming up pretty quick. And a whole lot of you are going to be out there, what, doing what? Celebrating. Mm -hmm. You like to get caught up with that Christmas Jesus. Uh -huh. But I don't talk about the Christmas Jesus because there's no salvation with him. In fact, I don't even know when Jesus was born. The Bible doesn't tell us that. And I'll tell you, if there's any, I challenge the Pope or anybody, any of your deacons or your bishops, I challenge you to show in this word where Jesus was born on December 25th. It's not there, all right? So you don't need to get caught up with those lies. The truth is what's going to make you free. Listen, I need to uh, stop just for a moment because, you know, there were some students who were troubled not too long ago over there in Berkeley, Berkeley High School. Those students stood up in opposition to racism and racist practices, and they marched off the campus and went up to the university, the home of the free speech movement, to let it be known that we're not going to stand for this anymore. So, you know, there are a lot of things that are troubling us and troubling you. And then, down there at the University of Missouri, you have to keep in mind that uh, our good brother, he took one for the cause, and, and the bottom line was he was not going to allow racist practices to continue and as a result of that he was willing to take one for the people uh-huh went out on a hunger strike of all those racist and vicious actions that had been going on on that campus and what happened 
ultimately the president decided to resign and even uh, the chancellor. So we understand that Black Lives Matter is a, is a movement that's alive and well. And so we old folk need to take a lesson from the young ones because I remember when I was 16, I was out there demonstrating and singing. I ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. And I woke up this morning with freedom on my mind and we shall overcome. So we need to understand, yes, it was then when I was a youngster and now I see the youngsters are taken to the street and making the message. So we are gonna have to do our part to make sure that the struggle continues. Listen. If you're troubled about money, then you need to understand you can't go to heaven on money anyway, all right? Silver and gold is not going to get you there, but your trust in the Lord. See, we're not, we're, we're, we haven't been converted by corruptible things. Over there in 1 Peter, uh, first chapter, verses 18 and 19, uh, we, were not, uh, uh, we, we were not converted by silver and gold, but by the blood of Jesus. So you're going to have to understand that. And if it's money that you need, remember Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of heaven uh -huh, and his righteousness, and then all of these things will be added to you. Well, what thing? You say you need money? Then seek the Lord. He's going to provide for you. He'll take care of every little bitty need that you have. And so now if, you're, if, if you are troubled about your business, now let me tell you, you need to take Jesus as one of your partners. You need to make him the one that helps you all. All right, he will. And then if you are troubled over where you're going to spend your eternity, then you need to keep in mind Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I'll come again. All right? He's not willing that anybody be lost. By faith, repentance, confession, and baptism, you'll be added to the Lord's body, which is his church. And if you live a faithful life, you'll be saved in the end. Brother Jackson's inviting you to join us again next week, if it's God's will, when the gospel truth will once again come your way, bringing to you spiritual songs and hymns and the power of the spoken word. So until then, it is my prayer that God will continue to bless you and your family and to keep you all safe.